Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. Presenting before you this tutorial is Javier Kleman. So today we will be learning chemical kinetics in chemistry. And of course, this will be our first topic in chemistry that I have introduced. And we'll be learning um, an overview base of chem uh, chemical kinetics. And of course, this information is coming from chemistry, the central science, um, 10th edition. So to those of you that don't have this book, make sure that you inbox me and I'll be able to do the needful. Okay, so let's get started. And of course, if you are new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe, you also hit the like button and don't forget to share to others. Okay, so what is chemical kinetics? Now chemical kinetics studies the rate at which a chemical process occurs. Okay, so it only studies the rate at which a chemical process occurs. So besides information about the speed at which reactions occur, kinetics also sheds light on the reaction mechanism. That is exactly how the reactions occurs. So you, you, you'll be able to understand the rate at which a reaction is able to occur and you'll be able to determine the rate at which a reaction is able to take place uh, with respect to time. You'll be able to determine which reaction is able to uh, completely be used up, which substance is able to be completely be used up than the other substance. And what time is it taking in order for that substance to be completely used up than the other? So that is just what chemical kinetics is all about. And of course, this is an outline that I have put for you. So be able to look at the reaction rates. That is how we measure rates. Then we'll look at the rate laws, how the rate depends on amounts of reactants. And when we say amounts of reactants, we're simply talking about the concentration. Then we'll also be able to look at the integrated rate laws, how to calculate amount left or time to reach a given amount. So we'll also look at the half-life, but then okay, also look at the half-life, that is how long it takes to react 50% of reactants. Okay, then I also look at Arrhenius equation, how rate constant changes with the temperature. Then at the end of it all, we can also look at the mechanisms, that is the link between rate molecular scale processes. But today, will only be able to cover reaction rates and rate laws as well as integrated rate uh, laws so that in my next video tutorial we'll be able to do the other three um, topics okay let's get started so first of all we look at the factors that affect reaction rates so factors that affect reaction rates are simply those uh, items, or let me say those points that you know that if you apply them in a chemical reaction, then automatically there might be a disturbance or there might be a reaction of some other kind. So for example, let's say you put a warm water on, on fire. Okay, if you put warm water, let's say on the stove, and then you put um, millimeter inside that water, then after some time you expect that water to start boiling you expect uh, at the end of it or everything to be shimmer so the time that it takes for that particular reaction between water and millimole to take place that time that it takes is simply what we call the red reaction the red reaction so the first thing that affects the red uh, the reaction rate is simply the concentration of reactants. The concentration of reactants. What do we mean when we say the concentration? 
as the concentration of reactants increases, so does likelihood that reactant molecule will collide. So, for example, if you get a small cup, a small cup of, of uh, the inside, let's say you put water and then you put sand in there, the rate at which those sand molecules are going to collide with each other as you shake the cup is going to be uh, much more compared to when you put little sand. So that, that's just the explanation. And of course, you know, the law of uh, uh, chemical kinetics, of course, the more the cohesion, the more the energy, the more particles are likely to collide, the more energy is going to be produced. And of course, the temperature is also one of them. At high temperatures, reactant molecules have, you know, uh, much more kinetic energy and, you know, they move faster. You know, there is that gain in energy. You, you, you are able to see this with mo water molecules. If you put water on the stove, you discover that as the heat begins to increase, as the temperature increases, uh, the particles gain kinetic energy and the rate at which they vibrate increases and it, eventually they collide with each other and they produce much more. Uh, the rate at which they react becomes even much more high. Okay, so uh, the other one is simply catalysts. So catalysts, they simply speed uh, reactions by simply changing the mechanism. So if a reaction happens to be slow, then you insert a catalyst inside that reaction. Then you expect that reaction to either increase in speed or simply decrease. So a catalyst uh, simply uh, changes the rate at which a reaction takes place. It affects the reaction mechanism of that particular reaction. And of course, you know, we go to the reaction rates. So I think we have a reaction movie here. Uh, in the first, in the first, in the first abort there, on the first can, uh, you are able to see that uh, there is one more of reaction uh, reactant A, but at the same time there is zero more of reaction B, and of course we don't see any reaction taking place. There is no collision that is taking place between uh, uh, because because there is only one type of a molecular substance in there so you don't expect anything but then you discover that after uh, 0.5 more of reaction a of, of of substance a has been put into the can and then 0.46 more of substance b has also been placed into the can then you discover that after 20 minutes after 20 seconds rather the reaction begin to take place and molecules begin to collide with each other. Okay, so I'm sure you are able to see in the next can what is happening. So we discover that after 40 seconds, uh, the rate at which these collide with each other even increases more, basically because uh, there is gain in energy. Okay, so rates of reactions can be determined by uh, simply monitoring the change in concentration of either reactants or products you know, as a function of time. Okay, so, you know, whenever we talk about the rate of reaction, the first thing that should come to your mind is simply uh, the, how that concentration of that particular substance varies with time. Okay, so that is just what uh, we are talking about. Okay, so we have a very... Uh, good illustration here. So this is a reaction between you know, butyl chloride with water and we're producing uh, butyl hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Now, so they want us first of all to determine the, concept, uh, uh, the, the, the rate of reaction okay, for this particular uh, substance which happens to be butyl chloride. So they want you to determine uh, the the, the, the reaction rate. So, as you are able to see, we, we, we have the time and at the same time we have the concentration. How you are able to know that this is the concentration check, uh, we put a brackets of that kind to simply show that that is the concentration of butyl chloride. So, you discover that when the time was zero seconds, butyl chloride 
reacted with water and its concentration was simply 0 0.1. So as you discover that as the reaction, as the time of reaction increased, you discover that the concentration of butyl chloride also increased. So you discover that uh, the, 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 the concentration of this particular uh, substance varies with time in that when there is an increase in the time, then automatically there is also an increase in the concentration. And you discover that the time is increasing by 50 seconds and the, 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 the concentration of butyl chloride also increases to some other amount. So this is just what reaction rates is all about. Okay, so I'm sure now you are able to see what's happening here. We are able to calculate the reaction rate from the time and the concentration that has been given. So from the time and the concentration that has been given, we are able to calculate the average rate, which is simply in concentration per second or in molar per second. So you discover that if you use the first row details and the second row details, then of course you are able to produce the average rate reaction. So in this case, if you use 50 seconds and zero seconds, then you also use 0 0.09, uh, that concentration and the first concentration you are able to produce 1.9 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 4 as the average rate. And of course, I'll be able to show you how just how to calculate this in my next video. In my next video, that is after I'm done explaining almost everything, I'll be able to show you how you are able to calculate that by simply using the time given and the concentration course, the average rate of reaction over each interval is the change in concentration divided by the change in time. Okay, and the change in concentration divided by the change in time. And of course, this is a very good summarized formula. So the average rate is simply the change in the given concentration over the change in time. Okay, so concentration, like I said, is simply uh, being put in brackets. Okay, and that is beta. So that is the concentration you divide it by the time you find the average rate. And of course, the concentration, we know that it is in molars. And of course, um, the time is simply in seconds. So if you divide, it is molar per second. Okay. I'm sure you've seen what they've done. So they took the concentration at initial, which is 0.1. Then they subtracted, since it is changed, they subtracted it from 0 0.09, uh, of course, 0 0.05 molar. Then they also subtracted the dime and then divided everything in molar per second. And of course, that gives you the average rate. So you are able to use those figures and you are able to calculate exactly just how they calculated this. It is that simple. Okay, so the same concept applies. This is just them calculating. I'm sure you're able to see how the calculations are. You can try this on your calculator, and of course, it will give you the same answer. So note that the average rate decreases as the reaction proceeds. As the reaction proceeds, you expect the average rate to simply um, decrease. Why? Because as the reaction proceeds, you discover that the reactants are being used up at some time. So you discover that the more the reaction, the more the average rate decreases. So from that table that you are able to see, you can plot everything on a diagram. And if you plot everything on a diagram, you'll be able to produce a curve 
of this particular kind. And from this curve, you are able to find the instantaneous rate at the time t. Okay, simply the reaction rate when time is simply approaching zero. So as the time is approaching zero, what is the reaction? What is the instantaneous uh, rate reaction of this particular uh, equation? Okay, so you simply, you, you, can, you, you can find everything from the equation. But then in mathematics, we know that whenever we have a curve, we are able to draw a tangent line. And from the tangent line, we are able to determine the, uh, the average rate of reaction, of course. In the rate of reaction, okay, we are able to determine the instantaneous rate, which is simply the, the rate reaction of this particular uh, react reaction, okay? The rate reaction on this particular reaction is time is simply approaching some zero. So you can find the instantaneous rate at any given point. You, you, you are able to calculate that provided you, you just draw a tangent and simply find the gradient. Okay. So this is just what I'm from explaining. The reaction slows down with time because the concentration of the reactants decreases. Of course, there is a decrease in the concentration as the reaction proceeds, basically because the reactants are being used up. Of course, we are able to deduce reaction rates and star chemistry. Star chemistry simply means we will be able to use the number of moles of this particular reaction in the equation to simply come up with um, whatever we have been given to calculate. Okay, so when you look at the, when you look, for example, let's look at the equation. Uh, we have been given butyl chloride reacting with water and is producing butyl hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid. Now look at the, Compare the, the number of moles in the equation between butyl chloride and uh, lysis butyl hydroxide. You discover that it's a one to one ratio, basically because the coefficients, their coefficients are all ones. Okay, so that is it's a one to one re uh, reaction. So it means that the average rate of appear uh, disappearance is the same as the rate of disappearance of appearance rather okay and the average rate of disappearance simply describes the rate at which the reactants are being used up and the average rate of appearance simply shows the rate at which the products are being formed up disappearance reactants being used up appearance products being produced okay and of course we said that the average rate of disappearance is equal to the average rate of appearance so uh when you, you, you this equation that you have been given here while they're saying that the rate is equal to then you are able to see that is butyl chloride over the change in time then equal to the change in butyl hydroxide over the change in time you are able to see that equal sign but then when you look on your left the butyl chloride there is a negative there is a negative that is on the front then here there is no negative it's positive that negative simply shows you that you are simply using up the reactants they are decreasing in their concentration at some time then we put a positive and the products to simply show that the products are simply gaining, they are increasing at some time. So that is just what we do. So from here we are able to calculate the we are able to calculate whatever we can be given using this stoichiometrical uh, um, knowledge. Okay, we are able to deduce everything. I'll be able to show you how you are able to use this knowledge to simply calculate certain questions under chemical kinetics. 
Now, remember that it was a one-to-one -one, uh, reaction. Now, look at this particular equation given. This is hydrogen reacting with iodide, and they're forming hydrogen iodide. Now, it's a very well-balanced equation. Now, for this one, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Why? Because if you check, uh, hydrogen iodide has got two moles, but hydrogen and iodide it's themselves, they only have one, uh, one more and one more. So if you want to write the rate of hydrogen iodide or the rate of the, the product, of course, we all know by now that it's going to be positive because it's gaining, it's being formed up. It's not being used up, but it is being formed. So in this case, if you want to find the rate of disappearance given the rate of appearance, sorry, if you want to find the rate of appearance of hydrogen iodide given the rate of disappearance of hydrogen, we are going to say that the change in hydro in the concentration of hydrogen over the time is going to equal to the change in the concentration of hydrogen iodide over the time. But then I want you to concentrate on the equation. When you look on the equation, you discover that the coefficient of hydrogen iodide is simply two. So we are going to say that one over two multiplied by the change in the concentration of hydrogen iodide over the time. If the coefficient was three, we'd have said one over three. If the coefficient was four, we'd have said one over four, just like that. If the coefficient of hydrogen was two, we'd have said negative one over two. So you must know that. So this hydrogen, this hydrogen is simply showing the rate of disappearance. Then this hydrogen iodide is simply showing the rate of appearance. So they are simply showing you that the average rate of disappearance is equal to the average rate of appearance or the rate at which you use up the reactants is equal to the rate at which the products are being formed. So make sure you take note of that. To generalize this, let's look at the reaction. We have reaction A rea reacting with B producing C and D. Notice that the coefficient of A or the number of moles of A is simply small letter A. The number of moles of B is simply small letter B and etc. etc. So now, A and B are the reactants which are being used up. C and D are the products which are being formed up. So reactants will always be negative. Products will always be positive. So when you look at the rate, since the coefficient of uh, A is simply small letter A, we'll say that negative 1 over A, the change in the concentration of A over the time, is going to equal to the same thing, negative 1 over B, small letter B, the change in the concentration of B over the change in time. The same concept applies, but this time around, it won't be negative. It will be positive. Why? Because the products are being formed up. So it will be positive 1 over C, the change in the concentration of C over the time. Okay. Then, of course, you can find the average rate of appearance for product C if you equate it to any of the reactants. It can be A or it can be B. I'll be able to show you in my next video just how to do uh, practice questions over uh, this particular topic. Okay. So reactants, of course, decrease and our products, of course, increase. Now we look at the concentration and rate. So these two simply come up with the rate law. Okay. It is simply that relationship that is between reaction, concentration, and time. Okay, so of course, like I said, it's simply whenever you see concentration and rate, concentration and time, concentration and rate, just know that you are simply talking about the rate law. It is that relationship that is between reaction concentration and the time. Of course, to determine the rate law, we measure.
the red at different starting concentrations. You look at the table, you have been given different number of experiments of ammonium ions. And of course, you've been given the concentration. The concentrations are different number of experiments. And some initial concentrations. And you have been given the observed initial rates. Okay? You can calculate the rate law from here. Using this same information that has been given to you. Of course, in my next video, you will be able to see just how to calculate this. So, if you want to calculate, if you want to find the rate law, you just have to compare reaction 1 to reaction 2. Okay? You compare reaction 1 to reaction 2. You compare their concentrations. So, if you want to find for ammonia, you look at the reactants for reaction 1 for ammonia, for ammonia, and the reactants for reaction two, for, and the concentration for reaction 2 for ammonia. Then, of course, you also look at the observed emission rate that is in most that is in a uh, molar per second. So, this information is enough to calculate the rate law. So I'll be able to show you in my next video. I just want you to know the overview base of what we're doing here. So if we want to find the rate law, we can also use uh, we can also use uh, experiment five and six. We can use experiment four and six. We, whichever experiment you can you can use, it, it is going to give you the correct answer provided you are picking two experiments. In my next video, I'll be able to show you just how to do this. Concentration and rate is what we're doing. So the rate is directly proportional to the concentration of ammonia ions. And at the same time, that same rate is directly proportional to the concentration of nitrogen dioxide. So if both of them are being a direct proportional, if that relationship is directly proportional, then it simply means that the rate is going to be directly proportional to the product of both concentrations of these particular substances. And of course, in mathematics, we know that whenever something is directly proportional to something, then automatically there happens to be a constant k somewhere. Now, this equation, of course, is called the rate law. And k is the rate constant. The, rest, the, the rate constant, usually most of the time, will be given to you, but sometimes you have to calculate. In my next video, I'll be able to show you just how to do this. K. We are doing rate laws. A, a, a rate law, okay, a rate law shows the relationship between the reaction rate and the concentrations of reactants. The, that, like I said, it is that relationship between rate and concentration. So for gas phase, reactants use a partial pressure for A instead of the concentration of A. So whenever you are dealing with gases, no, you are dealing with partial pressures and not concentration. K is simply a constant that has a specific value for each reaction. So usually it is given to you, but sometimes you'll be given to calculate and you'll be awarded, I think, about four marks. So it's very important. Usually most questions, you know, that, that that will be given to you, they will, they, will, they will give you four marks, give you five marks. It carries a lot of marks. So make sure that you know just how to do this. And of course, K is determined experimentally. That's why usually um, it's given to you. But of course, given the rate and the reactant, 
uh, concentration of the substances we can find k okay and another thing that i forgot to say uh k is unique for each reaction uh in other words it changes with the temperature so it depends we might find that if, if the temperature of ammonium ions is very high then you expect the constant k for this particular substance to be higher than the other one so it varies with temperature very much unique okay so you you cannot deduce a red law minus finding the exponents because the exponents tell the order of the reaction we call them the order of the reaction with respect to each reactant so for example we can say this reaction is a first order reaction in ammonium ions if the exponent is one we say that it is a first order in nitrogen dioxide if the exponent is one i'll be able to show you just how to come up with that in my next video okay so the exponents tell us the order to which uh, a particular substance belongs to and of course at the end of it all you'll be asked to find the overall reaction order and the overall reaction order is simply the summation of all the exponents so as you are able to see this reaction is uh, a second order overall okay it's a first order for both but overall it's a second order and why, why, why do we say overall it's a second order? It is because if you add the exponents, that is 1 plus 1, it's going to give you 2. You are able to integrate everything. If you integrate this, you'll be able to come up with what we call the integrated red laws. I think uh, it's not much more important, but you just have to know if you integrate... Uh, if you integrate the equation where we are saying rate is equal to k, uh, that is um, that is the reaction of substance A constant. If you integrate it, then you'll be able to come up with the this particular uh, equation which I've put in pink. Okay, the equation that we have put in ink, I'm sure you're able to see it. It is called the first order red law you know equation it is it is it is it is an integrated red law for first order it's very useful especially when you are asked to find you can ask to find the time you can ask to find the constant k usually they will, you use this equation so make sure you know the equation in pink at heart this equation when it is arranged it can be arranged in order and of course when it is arranged in order it will look like this okay so it's going to produce something like this you are going to have the natural log of uh concentration a at some time is being equal to the negative constant k multiplied by some time plus the natural log of uh reactant a at some initial time now notice that this force it's it, it obeys the equation on the straight line now when you look at the constant k it is negative that simply tells you that if you plot this it's going to be a straight line but it's going to be negative and of course this is a an important equation for the first law uh for the integrated rate law for first order so make sure you know it at heart Okay, so they are saying first order processes. So I've been given, okay, I think for now this is irrelevant. I don't want you to take note of this. Of course, you are able to see what's happening here. So when you look for, in the, for the first diagram, if you look at the first diagram, it's producing almost a, a straight line, but slightly straight course but when you look on the second line it's very much straight so first order produces a line which looks almost straight almost straight 
if, if there is a curve, then the curve is just going to be a little bit small, but it's going to be a straight line. And that simply tells you that this obeys uh, the equation y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, and of course, like I said, it's going to be a straight line, but the line is going to be uh, negative. It will be falling. Okay. For second order processes, I don't want you to master this. The only equation that I want you to know is this. So this is the equation that we'll be using for second order processes. 1 over reaction A at some time equal to the negative constant K plus 1 over react and a react, a reaction concentration of A at some time 0. That's the initial time. So if a process is second order in A, a plot of 1 versus T will yield a straight line with a slope of positive K. So this, this particular uh, equation also obeys Y equal to MX plus C. But for this one, okay, but for this one, you expect, of course, a, 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 a slope to be positive. The slope is going to be positive, of course, for this particular uh, reaction. Determine reaction order. So the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide at 300 uh, degrees Celsius described as described by the equation. Uh, of course, they're like just showing it as this equation. And now. I'm, 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 I'm very much interested on the uh, results that were obtained. From, this, from these results, you can find the, rea uh, the order of reaction of a particular rea uh, reaction or molecule. From these same details of this information, the time and the concentration were able to calculate um, the order of uh, reaction and the overall rate law. Okay, so I'll be able to demonstrate this in my next video. I'm sure you are now able to see what's happening here for the second order process. And of course, it's you in a straight line. You are able to see what's happening. Okay, so if you use this equation, 1 over a t. Uh, blah 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 if you use that equation of course you are going to obtain a straight line a straight slope it will be moving upward and of course in my next video tutorial we will be learning about the half-life but then to those of you that um, have not subscribed make sure that you subscribe and of course um, I think before I teach half-life I'll have to show you just how to solve practice questions concerning uh, the part that I've taught, please, please, please make sure that you subscribe, you support our channel, make sure that you also learn from us and if you have a part where you want to have some corrections, make sure that you will comment or you inbox me on my WhatsApp line and I'll be able to respond to you. Thank you so much.